Yeah, so how do you feel bringing Wild Honey to the Austin Film Festival and what was it like uh, watching it with an audience? It was really interesting watching it with an audience. Um, it, it, there's always laughs that you anticipate and uh, I had no idea how many more laughs there actually were. And uh, it was really neat, especially since uh, we were never really playing for the comedy. Uh, we were just playing for the truth, which it, to me is much funnier than trying to make it comic. And so a lot of people were laughing at the truth and that it was something that they themselves had experienced in real life. So it was really, really gratifying uh, that they really understood that there are people like this in the world. We just, they just happened to be filmed. Yeah, yeah. And what drew you to the role of Gabby? Gabby, to me, is an every woman that is m underrepresented, I think, in the film world. Uh, the fact that I got to be Meg Ryan, uh, Emma Stone, but in the age that I am, and uh, the fluffiness that I have, um, it's, it's really cool. And uh, I feel that because society doesn't really, really uh, get to see themselves on film, it was really neat to be able to do that, flaws and all. And um, I purposely didn't have a makeup and hair person because I, I wanted people to really relate and uh, escape in their lives rather than escaping in somebody's glamorous life. And that's why I liked it, yeah. Yes, an everyday woman, which is so great. I feel that I represent most American women and that they don't get to see themselves uh, having a great time on film. And um, it, it, it just makes me happy that I think last night I really got the confirmation that my instincts were right, that they wanted to see themselves. So that was neat. And then Wild Honey's a sort of different kind of rom-com. Yeah. So can you tell us, um, you know, what was it like? And uh, what was like, you know, doing this story and what was the best part of it about the story? Uh, what I believe is the best bar uh, part of this uh, story is the fact that a woman that is uh, going on 50 can actually have a romance with some dreamy men, uh, one being Todd Stashwick, who's the ex-boyfriend, and uh, Timothy Amundsen, who is her love interest. And they're dreamy middle-aged men that I think any woman would dream about. And what's great about this is that usually in film you have maybe a 50 year old man dating a 30 year old woman and uh, these men are younger than me um, not much uh, we're around the same age but um, in years wise they are younger than me so I love the idea that I was uh, robbing the you know the cradle a little bit yeah and um, uh, it, it's just it's neat in the sense that um, like I said before, that the everyday woman gets to go through that journey, go on that journey. And uh, that was fun. I, I forgot that it was a romantic comedy uh, when I was filming it because I was just going through it. And then when I saw it for the first time, I went, oh, yeah, it's a romantic comedy. But to me, it's also more than that. Uh, I think the, the greatest relationship is the relationship that Gabby has with her sister, Esther. And to me, that is a wonderful thing. The fact that I have three sisters, they're my best friends, I adore them. But I also know through experience that most people don't have that kind of relationship with their family. And the fact that I could have that relationship with my sister and that in a sense was the love story also was to me very gratifying. Yeah. Yeah, and I think a lot of, um like for myself, I love seeing stories that are more realistic and you know, sister to sister relationships are not really seen on screen or they're portrayed in you know, a certain way. But right, yeah. right. Um, it, it, it's funny that you should bring that up because uh, lately the, the projects I've been choosing are the projects that pass the Bechdel test. And um, I love the idea that this not only passes the Bechdel test, it does a few times over. The Bechdel test, yeah, of course. The Bechdel test uh, was uh, 
a test that these two women, two women put together that Gina Davis kind of uh, illuminated for everyone that uh, is finding a movie or a television show that has a scene that portrays, that's longer than 30 seconds, that portrays, uh, that has two women with names uh, that are talking about something other than men or their reproductive organs or their children and it's about their lives. And um, the fact that this passes the Bechdel test a few times over thrills me to no end. And uh, on top of the fact that it's not just women, but women over 40. So that's neato too, yeah, yeah. You've had such a long career in television and film. What are some of the moments that stand out that have been you know, really great experiences? Because I feel like you have also um, not done stereotypical characters yeah. as well. So can you talk about a little bit about that, You know, your journey through the, the film industry? Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Uh, when I first started, I think my first movie was in 1987. Oh my gosh. Yeah, nice, nice, I love it. I'm old. Anyway, no, it's great. <laughs> um, what's great about it uh, is the fact that when I first came into this business, a lot of women that had extra body weight were considered asexual. Just just be nurse, be, you know, battle axe woman, be whatever. And I found that I started getting hired simply because I had sexuality. And I thought that was very interesting. And so um, the fact that I've had love interests in a lot of my roles, starting with Little Princess, which is one of, still one of my favorite roles. Um, you know, when you're being directed by Alfonso Cuaron, you're okay, you know, you're okay. And then going to that, to, to Perfect Storm, where we had, I had a romance with the great and powerful and fabulous John Hawks, and um, who I adore, who we're still friends, which is a lovely thing. Um, it, it, it's those two films, uh, along with uh, uh, more recently uh, working with Louis C.K. and being his sister was a lot of fun too. And um, I feel really fortunate to have had the career that I have uh, without compromising my personal principles, ethics, morals. Um, and uh, I try as hard as I can not to perpetuate bad self body image in women. Uh, and I think Gabby is uh, uh, right up there, right up there, where she doesn't have necessarily bad self esteem. She just uh, or low self-esteem, she has uh, low self-awareness in a way, which I think most people walk around the world not being that self-aware either. So it's uh, wonderful to play that part. And uh, uh, I think she's just uh, adding to the bag of women that don't perpetuate bad self-body image. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then are you excited to watch any other films here at Austin Film Festival? You know, I wish I could have the time to do so. Um, at the same time that uh, we had our uh, screening last night was exactly the same time that Bill Whitliff was speaking about uh, the film that he did years ago called Raggedy Man. And Bill Whitliff gave me one of my first jobs, um, a, a Western called Ned Blessing. And uh, I love that man like you wouldn't believe. And I really wanted to be able to see that, but it was exactly the same time. and. Uh, he also wrote Perfect Storm, so uh, it, it, uh, he plays a really big part in my career. But I, I did get to speak to him this morning by telephone, and he had a great time at the fest. And he said that he's been at this festival, uh, give or take a year or two, for the last 24 years. And so that was kind of neat. And uh, I think the same time uh, that we were also uh, showing the film, uh, Walter Hill was showing his, and Walter and I worked on another Western. So my Western guys were here, but I didn't get to, I didn't get to see them, so.